the air with me now for some riveting radio real estate. Don Pinnell. Good morning, Don. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Hard to believe it's December. December. <laughs> oh, my Cash. God. Yeah. Lights are up and people are getting ready to celebrate some holiday magic tonight. Right. We're continuing on with our conversation of red flags. Red flags. Something you think you need to be aware of during yes. this process. Yes. Yes. We, ta we stopped talking um, last time about... Um, easements and agreements and there was some uh, that's a pretty big one because those can really if they're if they're not found or they're not existing they can really cause problems so the main suggestion there um, from these folks is that if you have any question at all uh, you should contact an attorney or uh, through your title company and really make sure that those are are put in place I just ran into one just recently on a deal that's that's closing here in the next couple of weeks and it, we thought that we could just do the the uh, road easement and the well agreement at the time of closing but this particular lender needed those done ahead of time huh? so we had to scramble a little bit to get them done and get them signed and uh, so be aware that those and usually they're things like who takes care of the road if it's a shared road who takes care of the well if it's a shared well or who you know what what the agreements are as far as who pays what um, those kinds of things. So let me stop you right there. Yeah. If you're, and I, we've talked about how this is not the best idea, but if you were to go out and look for a house and do this solely on your own, would you know that this is a thing until maybe well into the process? It, that's entirely possible. Yes. Cause it's not something that, that a lot of people even have on their radar sure. screen. So, you know, you, you don't, you don't think to ask how many people are on this well or, yeah. or who takes care of this road. Um, you know, you like the house and, and that's about as far as it goes. Uh -huh. But there are a lot of underlying things. And that's why these red flags are, are important because you, you get this sometimes multi-page title report. And, and if you just don't pay any attention to it, you can, you can get stuck with some, some naughty issues. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Sure. So, uh, so uh, easements and agreements are, are a big one. Um, then and the next one are uh, is trust deeds and this is where um, the title company really earns their money uh, they it's part of their responsibility to look through all of the old paperwork that goes with this particular property and a lot of times or sometimes anyway there can be old deeds on there that never got cleared so watch for those um, and if you see one if you see something listed on that title report that doesn't look familiar or is really, really old, be sure and check with the title company. And what they can do is they can either try and track down the the person who holds that deed and find out what was going on with that. A lot of times what happens is people do a, like a quick claim deed and that kind of thing, especially within families, and only they forget to record it with the county. Uh -huh. So in their minds, they've taken care of everything they need to take care of but it has never been recorded is there a statute of limitations on this there I'm, really I mean, isn't no it could be deeds from the it, 1800s or? it could be wow. yeah i've never seen one of those but it certainly could be i did run into one of these not too long ago too where uh the family member had um thought they had deeded the property over to the to the other family member only hadn't been recorded so then it was up to the to the um title company to track down this person, luckily they were still in town uh -huh. and get them to sign the official document. Oh, wow. And then, but again, if that hadn't been, if, if, if we hadn't seen that on the, on the thing and said, Hey, wait a minute, this, this person, we don't recognize this name as being in the chain of, of what we know about this house. Um, you know, at some point they could theoretically come back and say, Hey, no, I, I still own this property. Wow. So it's pretty important to, to look through all those and they, they're pretty much listed in a, in a chronological order in the report. So just kind of glance through them and make sure that you recognize everybody that's, that's listed on there. Huh. This is important for the seller to do as well, you know, cause a lot of times they know kind of the chain of events on this property so and they want so, to get this cleared up too so right exactly exactly so it's in everybody's interest but but it is something to, to watch for okay. on that report so um, the next one are encroachments and these are interesting because it's usually something like a fence or uh, something like that um, and it's it's on there 
and it's and it's just there. But a lot of times the the red flag is that the lender will want um, to know where exactly the property line is, and if there are encroachments in some circumstances, they won't lend on that property mm. until those are those are resolved. And what what they usually do is uh, they do a notice of violation, and then uh, either the the part person who owns that property deeds that portion of it over to the person or they take the fence down or something like that. But be aware that there can be encroachments, uh, usually, like I say, usually a fence or a driveway or something like that, that somebody put there years ago and then everybody just forgot about it. I hear about that. There are rumors in our neighborhood that yeah. some of the fence lines may be over property lines. Right, right. That is a tough one. It is a tough one. And and again, the the, the cases where I've seen this happen, um, I had a case a while ago where uh, somebody had built a dog kennel and it was over on the neighbor's property. Well, the neighbor didn't really use that property anyway, so they just sold it to the to the neighbor for a dollar and and then it was up to the to the neighbor to go down and record that uh -huh. with the county so that in effect adjusted their property line over to include the dog kennel but if it's a if it's a property that somebody that the neighbor really needs then then you're going to need to that that person would probably have had to have moved the dog kennel back to their side of the property line does the proposed buyer talk to the neighbor? Uh, possibly. I guess I would recommend that you work through your real estate agent and title title officer to, to do that. Um, you know, you can get into some problems because you, you're as the buyer, you don't own that property yet. Yeah. So you really have no standing to to do that. I mean, I guess in a perfect world, the, the seller would, would help you with that, but they may not be involved either. So those are kinds of things that you need to work with wow. with the title. And again, title company earns their money here in this case. Our, um, is that a land surveyor who comes out? Or what's that person called who comes out and checks the property lines? A surveyor, yeah. Those yeah. expensive? Um, they can be. Uh, if, you know, $1,000 is not uncommon uh, for somebody to come out, and it just depends on, on who you hire. And um, to avoid a potential lawsuit and exactly. loss of property it, down the line. Exactly. It's... You know, in, and in some states, it's a requirement that you get a survey here not so much and it's not that common people just kind of say well i think it's kind of over here and yeah, kind of yeah. over here but um if you have any concerns at all it it's probably money well spent to either ask the seller to provide that or as the buyer to go ahead and and hire somebody yourself because even to, if you had a metal detector and you found the corner post and that's not, not that's not even a foregone conclusion that you'll be even able to do that yeah. in in a lot of cases, and especially in um, neighborhoods, you know they, those were platted so many years ago that those those markers are long gone. So you know, it, like I say, if if you if you have any concern, it's worth following up on and hiring. We, there's a guy I know that that just finds the corners for you, and that's a little little cheaper than doing a full blown survey but it just depends on your comfort level and the other thing to mention is if you're looking on google maps right. the plot lines the lot size does not necessarily overlay properly that, even on the county website it doesn't always yeah. line up so that's that's the thing i that the one i usually go to is the is the county thing just for a, a, a general idea and and the legal description on how big the property actually is um but but again if you, as the buyer, have concerns, be sure and voice those. Sure. And and prior to the sale, preferably. Yeah, right. <laughs> rather than, yeah, yeah. So the next one is a notice of violation that comes from the county, uh, usually. And this is either from the, health, from the fire department or the health department or the local zoning enforcement um, folks. And I apologize if, if you're watching this on TV, this is really small print. Uh. <laughs> I'm trying to, try, kind of trying to read this. So uh, if there are those things on the on the deed or on the paperwork that you get from the title company, those are always a red flag. So be sure and watch for those because the lender will not accept those. Uh, if the fire department or the health department uh, or the zoning official has put a notice on the deed, there's something radically wrong with that property. Usually for the health department, it's a failed septic system or something like that. Uh -huh. Or uh, for the zoning, it's that something was going on on that property that, that was not 
permitted under the zoning. So be sure and find out what those are. Fire department uh, notice could be something like uh, there's no fire uh, access, water access, you know, or, or the fire trucks can't get in there or something like that. Huh. So be sure if you see anything that says notice of violation, be sure and check that out and find out what's going on with that and what what you need to do to repair that. Well, we're so. coming up on the end of the show here. So what you have some numbers for me? I do. Yeah. And, and then uh, next time we'll continue on because there are more okay. red flags. So <laughs> there's a lot of them. I do have some numbers. I got the latest numbers for the month of um, November. So uh, you may have seen uh, recently that we that the numbers are way down as far as uh, listings yeah. and we've, we've talked about that that and even on this report there's 0.9 months of inventory available and again that means that if everything were to sell that's currently listed uh, it would take less than a month to to sell clear it clear it out yeah wow. so yeah kind of getting kind of scary because um, you know obviously if you don't have anything to sell people don't have anything to buy yeah and uh, so yeah it's again this is a good time to to list your house if you're thinking about that at all um, I would love to talk to you about that because we need to we need to get some more options available so according to this number in uh, in November we had 13 new listings is all uh, and 15 went pending. So that took presumably two more off the rolls yeah. that were, were listed and 16 were sold. So uh, those numbers are, are pretty down to down to bare bones. So anyway, that's, uh, and the, uh, the median or the average price of the newly listed home was 189,642. So that's going up a little bit. The average pending was 186,677. And the average sold was 259,500. So those numbers are looking good, actually, the, um, for for the economy. <laughs> but um, again, the the scary number is that 0.9 yeah. months of inventory. So, well, how can folks get in touch with you, Don? They can call me at 360-490-4493, or they can come and see me on the corner of Third and Railroad. Or tonight, I will be probably around a fire pit. I was just going to say that. <laughs> holiday magic tonight. So you'll be out and about. Very cool.